I challenged myself to beat Terraria with 1 HP and defeated the Wall of Flesh. However, now that I'm in hard mode, the challenge only gets harder from here. And let me tell you, I will never recover from the trauma, PTSD, and insanity this game has caused me. Seriously, I can't walk 30 feet without dying. So buckle up and prepare yourself as I cry my way through hard mode. Opening up my Wall of Flesh treasure bag, I activated my Crimson Heart that gave me an additional accessory slot and also acquired the Clockwork Assault Rifle, as well as the Melee Emblem. But most important of all, I received the Pawn Hammer. Let's go break some altars. On my way to the Corruption, I located our Hollowed Biome inside our Corruption. However, before I could break an altar, I stepped on a thorn bush and exploded. Down in the Corruption, I broke the altars and blessed our world with Cobalt, Mithril, and Titanium. With Spelunker and Mining Potions activated, I descended into the caverns and mined a bunch of Cobalt, during which I had a panic attack as we encountered the terrible evolution of giant worms. Diggers. Leave me alone, please. I just, I don't want to die right now. Worms. Then I crafted the Cobalt Pickaxe. With the Cobalt Pickaxe, I returned to the caverns to mine Mithril. At the same time, I also discovered our underground corruption that spreads throughout my entire elevator. We then encountered the Bane of my existence. Giant cave bats. And I handled it like a mature adult and totally didn't freak out at all. Oh, there's giant bats. <laughs> Leave me alone. Please, I don't want to die. Searching for more mithril, I faced off against a world eater. And let me tell you, this moment alone encapsulates the entire challenge. No! Man, worms! Why? Why worms? Thank you for all the support. These videos take a long time to create, so seeing you support and enjoy the videos means more than the world. So if you enjoy this video, like the video and comment down below your favorite slime color. Mine's blue. In the caverns, I spent a year slowly shooting a mimic. So we're gonna be here for a while. Killing the mimic, not only did I get a ridiculous amount of gold, but I also acquired the magic daggers, which helps considering everything kills me. But what do I know? Since I immediately died to a giant bat. No, don't, aw. Oh and lost all of my gold. Oh, I had 20 gold. Finally mining more mithril, I went to search a water chest and was curb stomped by an angler fish. Listen, these feral fish managed to destroy me every time. At the surface, I turned my mithril into bars and crafted the mithril anvil. However, I didn't have enough mithril for a pickaxe, so I returned to the caverns, but before I could mine more mithril, silt fell on my head and exploded my brain. We died to silt. We died to silt. Silt fell on our head and exploded our brains. Collecting more mithril, I finally had enough to craft a pickaxe. It was time to collect titanium, and I had a plan to make sure it went smoothly. And oh boy, it went nothing but smoothly. My plan was to travel to the cavern lair just before hell, where you can usually collect a bunch of titanium. However, remember how I said our underground corruption has spread throughout our entire elevator? Well, yeah. I think you can guess what happened. We're gonna die. And when I did manage to make it past the underground corruption, I repeatedly threw myself into lava. Since, who doesn't like a hot, molten bath that burns you alive, right? After having my neck snapped multiple times, I was getting a little annoyed. Why? Why? Cleaners. Why is everywhere corruption? After even more searching, I located the underground hollowed. I would be kinda excited, except for I know I will be spending way too much time in this biome, but that happens later. In the present, we were unexpectedly attacked by a Chaos Elemental, and I totally didn't cry or wet myself in fear. Not so soon after, I found a crap ton of titanium. I also found the wizard NPC, however, he was being attacked by a skeleton archer, so I valiantly sacrificed my life to save him. Let's grab our Hellforge. And let's turn that into a Titanium Forge. Now that I had a Titanium Forge, it was time to go and mine even more Titanium. Finding a bunch of Titanium, I finally had enough to craft the Titanium Pickaxe. Now, all I needed was the Titanium Armor. You're probably wondering, what's the point of crafting armor since you get one shot by everything, even sand? Well, the Titanium Armor has an awesome effect where it generates a defensive barrier that can block attacks. And considering I can't get hit, that will make a huge difference towards my life expectancy. I forgot how high Chaos Elementals could jump, and I was brutally dissected. Once again, on my way into the cavern, a possessed armor traveling faster than the speed of frickin' sound nuked my ass, collecting a massive amount of titanium. However, for some reason, someone must have put out a hit on me, since every enemy in the hollowed swarmed me from every direction and tore me in half. I'd play the audio from the clip, but I don't feel like it, and it has nothing to do with the fact that I screamed for my life and cursed repeatedly. <laughs> now that I had collected enough titanium, I crafted the ranger version of the titanium armor. I was running low on storage, so I quickly expanded my base and built more S-tier NPC housing. Like seriously, wouldn't you want to live in a 3x10 block cozy and compact house? Let's ask the merchant. You love your house, right? 
Please, help us. We can't escape. Wow. <laughs> Let's pretend you didn't hear that. It was time to begin preparation to kill Skeletron. Yes, Skeletron. In part one, I decided to defeat the Wall of Flesh instead of Skeletron. It wasn't because we suck at the game or a skill issue, alright? It wasn't that at all. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to know what happened, go watch part one. I'm not explaining. So like any rich and tyrannical real estate developer, I bombed the underground hollowed, created a spawn point, and continued to bomb the underground hollowed, starting the construction of my hollowed farm to collect souls of light. I died. A lot. To summarize the next two hours of my life, I'll just play this clip. We've died so much. And I mean like so, so, so much. After some time passed, I found my leftover dynamite from the Wall of Flesh fight and exploded myself. I also acquired the marrow, and let me say, this weapon is so undervalued. Honestly, if it wasn't for the marrow, I probably would have quit this challenge, since the marrow single-handedly carries me through early hard mode. However, even though the marrow is amazing, it didn't stop me from blowing my house up. No! Ah! Once the construction of the hollowed farm was complete, I began hunting the creatures of the hollowed into extinction. And after fighting for my life for what felt like a century, I collected a crap ton of souls of light. So turning my souls into keys of light, placing the key of light into a chest, I summoned a hollowed mimic. With my extremely lawn arena and the marrow, I easily defeated the hollowed mimic. However, I didn't get the Daedalus Stormbow. So I defeated it again and again. However, I didn't get the Daedalus Stormbow. On the bright side, as a result of farming, I was no longer poor, so I reforged my marrow to Unreal. I then discovered our pylon network had been destroyed. So upon searching why, I discovered our entire desert had been corrupted. Because why not, right? I can't fathom a reason why the game would take pity on me. So I quickly built a house in the snow biome and placed the snow pylon. I could once again teleport to the dungeon. Determined to get the Daedalus Stormbow, summing up the hours of my life I will never get back, I'll create a high queue. Please, somebody help. They are surrounding me. Well, too late, I'm murdered. So changing focus, I went up to a sky island to farm harpies and wyverns to get the angel wings, since I'm tired of using rocket boots. A wyvern spawned in and the marrow came in clutch. I easily defeated the wyvern and collected the souls of flight. However, I needed to defeat a few more, so after nearly being sneak attacked by a wyvern, I collected the souls of flight and crafted angel wings. I could now fly, just in time too since a pirate invasion spawned. I even defeated a pirate ship and acquired the Black Spot Mount. Once I defeated the pirate invasion, I decided, screw getting the Daedalus Stormbow. I have a date with Skeletron, and I'm going to take him down. That sounded bad. So I buffed and summoned Skeletron, and he shot an equally thick mini skull into my beautiful face. It wasn't looking good. However, I could do this. Summoning in Skeletron, I easily defeated his hands. As his thick skull charged towards me, I dealt massive damage. And then it happened. And just like that, we beat him. That super difficult boss that was impossible to kill in pre-hard mode. We finally freaking beat him. Let's go. Just as Skeletron spanked my ass in the past, I spanked his thick skull twice as hard. I got my revenge. Traveling to the jungle, I constructed NPC housing and purchased the jungle pylon. So it's time to set our sights on destroying the destroyer. <laughs> Get it? Destroying the destroyer? Yeah, I'll admit, it wasn't my best joke. So traveling to and mining the meteorite, my yellow booties touched a smidgen of meteorite and I exploded. After collecting a bunch of meteorite, I was met with an interesting surprise. That's not a good surprise. He spawned in and it took less than 10 seconds for his steel skull ass to death laser me. Now that I have enough meteorite, I crafted some meteorite bars. I then purchased a mini shark from the gunslinger and crafted the star cannon. And of course, it's an awkward star cannon because why wouldn't one of the most damaging weapons in the game be awkward? So reforging the star cannon into a murderous star cannon. It was time to acquire the magic conch since the magic conch will be crucial to defeating the destroyer. So I set out to our corrupted desert to find the magic conch and <laughs> <laughs> I have a few words to say. Firstly, this purple spewing, floating, stupid douchebags. How am I supposed to search for anything if I can't move more than four blocks without getting blasted by purple fire? Next up, Dune Splicers. I hate, 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 hate. Loathe entirely. These sand biters deserve to go to hell. Finally, let's give an honorable mention to sand. I don't have much to say about sand, except for...
Oh, so much suffering. To sum up my hours of suffering, I quit looking for the magic conch and changed plans, since the corrupt desert is a death trap. Speaking of suffering for hours, 98.5% of everyone who enjoys the videos are not subscribed. So for every subscriber this video gets, I'm going to mine 100 blocks with a copper pickaxe in a brand new world. Oh. And by the way, there are only 20,160,000 blocks in a large terraria world, so I could end up having to mine an entire world with a copper pickaxe. Beginning my new plan to defeat the destroyer, I bombed a giant tunnel through my world. And after dying repeatedly, I constructed our massive tunnel of doom. Preparing my star cannon and collecting way too many falling stars. I had to go collect lead, since why wouldn't I have lead this late in hard mode? Now that I have lead, we crafted a mechanical worm, ready to fight. I readied my star cannon and summoned the destroyer. Well, that didn't work, but I was determined to win. So collecting more souls of night and at the same time cursed flames, I crafted another mechanical worm slept until the next night, and summoned the Destroyer. And I'll admit, I was a bit overconfident. So could you believe it when my perfect plan didn't work and I got lasered to death, I freaked out and crashed the game? This would turn out to be the worst decision I could have made, since I didn't have autosave on. So all the progress I made in this world was lost. But this gave me a chance to update my pylon network, so I constructed a house in the ocean and purchased the ocean pylon. I then moved the forest pylon and my pylon network was operational besides the jungle. Then I started constructing the new Tunnel of Doom. But to keep the story short and sweet, I got my ass kicked. It was clear the plan wasn't going to work, so it was time to go back to the original plan. But first, I constructed a house in the jungle and set up the pylon. But a werewolf decided he'd like a taste of my flesh and killed us. Plus, the dryad got decapitated by a flying frog, so at least I wasn't the only one getting my ass kicked. I needed a magic conch, and there's no way I was going to go and search our damned desert. So I created a new world, and died. Honestly, I'm starting to think maybe the desert isn't so bad, and I just suck. But there's no way I can be bad at the game. <laughs> Right? So digging down, I found a magic conch. Now that I have the magic conch, I roped up at the ocean and constructed a house for NPCs. This would prevent wyverns and harpies from spawning. However, I'd just like to say to all the wyverns and harpies in the world, why can't you just leave me alone? So finishing constructing the house, everything was set to destroy the destroyer. You're probably wondering what the plan is. Well, once I spawn the destroyer, I will teleport to the ocean and fly up to the house. As the destroyer flies over to me, I blast his ass with the star cannon. Ready to go, I summoned him in and the plan went perfectly. Just kidding, I got probed. So after collecting souls and falling stars for a frickin' century, I crafted a mechanical worm. It was time for round two. Buffing up, I summoned the destroyer, traveled to the ocean, and started blasting. Oh! Oh, it worked! Oh, it worked! We just defeated the destroyer! After being lasered and probed countless times, the destroyer had been destroyed. It was time to defeat Skeletron Prime and his extra thick skull. But first, I opened the treasure bag. Now that I have acquired Souls of Might, it was time to get the Mega Shark. So I purchased some illegal gun parts from the Gunslinger, traveled to the ocean, and drowned myself. I started to farm shark for fins, and at the same time, the Steampunker moved in. After collecting five shark fins, I crafted the Mega Shark. Now that I have the Mega Shark, I purchased way too many bullets and crafted Cursed Flame Bullets, since they do a crazy amount of damage, and will help to defeat Skeletron Prime. Grabbing a bunch of rails I had collected, I left for the ocean and started constructing my Skeletron Trap. Building 76 rails across, 36 diagonally up, an 11 rail buffer, 36 diagonally left, hammering the end of the rail so it launches us off. I then built one over and 36 diagonally with a 15 rail buffer on the other side. However, this would turn out to be wrong, so I fixed this later. With the Skeletron Prime Arena ready to go, I decided to raid the ice biome for frost cores to get the frost armor since it was storming. Finding an ice golem, it shot a frost beam faster than light and murdered me. So to defeat the ice golems, I broke a single wide block gap above me and used my new mega shark with their zero brain cells the ice golems could not compute what was happening and defaulted to spinning like a blade blade. Killing the ice golem, I then farmed two more ice golems. I now had three ice cores. However, we needed titanium, so I traveled into the caverns and mined titanium. If you think that was a little too easy, you're right. I died. A lot. 
Returning to the surface without an arm and a leg, I turned our titanium into bars and crafted the frost armor. Even though defense literally has no effect, the damage increase the frost armor grants is an extreme upgrade. I then got not one, but two surprises. This was a great chance to test the arena. So teleporting to the ocean, Skeletron spawned in and the trap worked terribly. His extra thick skull smacked me harder than a truck. However, I chose to leave this to bad luck. On the bright side, I got the shark tooth necklace. I then slept soundly and dreamt of having more than one HP while suspended thousands of feet in the air. Waking up refreshed and ready to go. Using a mechanical skull I collected from farming in the hollowed, I summoned Skeletron Prime, and it was going fantastic. However, once again, he spanked my ass so hard I exploded. Remember when I said the arena was built incorrectly? Yeah. Well, the left side of the arena was too long and resulted in our death. So to fix it, I rebuilt the arena by building 32 diagonally and 15 over with the bumper. With the arena fixed, it was time to curb stomp Skeletron Prime's extra thick skull, but a Blood Moon spawned. However, I wasn't gonna let some stinking Red Moon stop me, so I summoned Skeletron Prime. And we just beat Skeletron Prime! Without getting hit once! Woo! Let's go! The arena worked perfectly. Without so much as a scratch, I defeated Mr. Metal Man. <coughs> Sorry, I meant Skeletron Prime. Since it was still night, I decided, why not fight Mr. Metal Man again? However, I was quickly impaled by a death laser. It was time to defeat the twins, but this time, I needed the Daedalus Stormbow. So traveling to the underground hollowed, it took no less than five minutes for a hollowed mimic to spawn, and after battling for my life, it dropped the Daedalus Stormbow. Reforging the Daedalus Stormbow, we farmed Souls of Flight to craft the Frozen Wings. Since I got an Ice Feather while farming, crafting Frozen Wings, I could now fly even faster. Setting my sight on defeating the twins, I needed teleporters. However, I had to locate the mechanic, so descending into the dungeon, I quickly found the mechanic, and my spine was ripped out by water? Back at spawn, apparently without a spine, I perched the wrench, wire cutters, six teleporters, and a whole lot of red wire. I then started constructing the array of teleporters in a six-pointed star. This will allow me to easily evade the twins' attacks. However, I was degloved by a harpy. Degloved? What does degloved even mean? Oh dear lord, that is terrible. Anyways, after having the layers of my skin torn off, there was a tree in my way. Channeling my inner lumberjack, I chopped it down. Now that the tree was out of my way, I continued to assemble the array of teleporters. I was then dive-bombed by a wyvern. The whole process of creating the array of teleporters was extremely tedious. I'd construct a teleporter, then get sniped by a harpy. And I repeated this process. Honestly, I'm waiting for a moment where I am not constantly in danger and can relax, but I have a sneaky suspicion that will never happen. Also, I'm officially broke. Wires are a lot more expensive than I thought. Completing the teleporter array, I was ready to fight the twins. So preparing my potions and cursed arrows, I summoned the twins. I'd like to say we constructed the teleporters, Ron, or my keyboard stopped working. But the truth is, I just stood there as the twins turned me into a slushy. At this point, I'm fairly certain we just suck at the game. Crafting more mechanical eyes, it was time for round two. So going AFK until the next night, I received another surprise. And the twins spawned in, and Spazlord himself spewed me with green flames. Round three, I summoned the twins. Making sure to kill Retinizer first, I switched teleporters the second they got close to me. Honestly, I was on edge the entire fight. The twins have always been the worst mechanical boss, so I wasn't taking any chances. Oh, I thought we were just about to die. Woohoo! Just like that, the jungle grows restless. We just killed all of the mechanical bosses without getting hit. That is freaking awesome. Okay. Opening the treasure bag, I now had souls of sight. I also got a dev set, but I liked our yellow booties and gloves, so I didn't equip it. Then I crafted the pickaxe axe. All of the mechanical bosses have been defeated, and the jungle grows restless. So, it was time to remove a chunk of the jungle in preparation for the plant terra fight. I also constructed another tunnel of doom. The plan was to fight phase one plant terra in the arena, then I fall down the massive tunnel. In theory, the plan was fantastic. In reality, it was terrible and resulted in long lasting trauma that I'll be talking to my therapist about for years. I was running out of plant terra bulbs, and the jungle was starting to get on my nerves. So I decided that over 
supersized plant can shove it and initiate it, Operation Beat Plant Terra to Death. And you may be wondering, how are you going to beat Plant Terra to Death? Oh, just you watch. Buying the sickle from the merchant, I devastated the environment and collected an ungodly amount of hay. However, it wasn't enough, and after depleting my world's hay, we created other worlds and decimated their environments. <laughs> Just don't tell the dryad. After collecting a bunch of hay, I crafted 100 target dummies. However, since I had 54 silver to my name, I needed money and I needed it fast. So diving into lava, I mined hell dry of hellstone, collected obsidian and crafted a smack ton of hellstone bars. Selling them, I made a quick platinum coin. It would do for now. It was crucial that we have a flare gun in order to defeat Plantera, and of course, I didn't. After a few minutes of mining, I didn't find the flare gun. However, I did find water walking boots. This was amazing, since I was one step closer to achieving the Terra Spark boots. And no more than like two minutes later, I located the ice skates. I'm telling you, whenever I play Terraria, the game helps me find everything I'm not looking for at the moment. Continuing to mine, I found the flare gun. And little did I know, the flare gun would prove to be the key factor in defeating the Moon Lord. But at the moment, I had an oversized plant to jump. Excavating a portion of the jungle, I placed our 100 target dummies and built a house for three NPCs. I would now begin the arduous journey of collecting hive blocks to craft hives. And let me tell you, it was actually impossible to do with 1 HP. Something always went wrong. In this case, my flesh was eaten by the Bee Queen. However, thanks to all the chlorophyte I collected while creating our useless jungle arena, I managed to collect a bunch of hive blocks and keep my organs inside my body. So, win-win! Crafting hives at the surface, which, by the way, can only be crafted using a heavy workbench in a graveyard biome. Why you have to be surrounded by dead people to craft hives, I don't know. All that was left was a good melee weapon to beat Plantera to a pulp with. Haha, <laughs> get it? Because you can turn plants into pulp? Okay, I'll stop. So I traveled to the dungeon to find the Muramasa, since I am going to craft the True Knight's Edge. Collecting a golden key, I opened a chest and acquired the Muramasa. Then seconds later, I kamikaze into a spike. At the surface, I crafted the Blade of Grass with my materials from the jungle. Now that I had all the blades required, I went to an altar and crafted the Knight's Edge. Back at home, with my souls of might, sight, and fright, I achieved the True Knight's Edge. Since I didn't want to have to locate another Plantera Bulb, I turned off autosave and created a save point just before plant Terra. Oh, and I purchased a thousand flares. With everything ready, I placed all of our hives, broke a target dummy, and summoned plant Terra. And it failed. See, the plan is, by placing 100 target dummies and bees, I can hit the max entity limit. This makes it so Plantera doesn't have her tentacles, thorns, and so she cannot move. But of course, something went wrong, because even though I've died a bazillion times, the Terraria gods refused to take pity on me. So after some problem solving, I discovered the solution. Collecting more hive blocks, the True Knight's Edge rendered the bees useless. At the surface, I turned our hive blocks into more than 100 hives, and I was ready to go. If you're curious what the solution is, you need to place and break 100 hives. So placing all 100 hives and breaking a target dummy, I summon Plantera. And it worked. Plantera was stuck, and all that was left was to shoot 1,000 flares to hit the projectile limit, so Plantera can't shoot thorns at us. Now that the flares were shot, I whipped out my True Knight's Edge, and were ready to beat Plantera. But my sword wasn't working, and Plantera shot a thorn, killing me. Just when I thought it was over, I respawned, and Plantera was still there. <laughs> this is so stupid! How am I supposed to kill this thing? That's a great question. If I get too close, I get blasted. But I made a crazy discovery. Since the flares were not close enough to Plantera, it was not cancelling the projectiles. So I tried to get some more flares. Unfortunately, we died and she ran away like a wimp. Summoning in Plantera again, this time I had prepared even more flares. Shooting the flares next to Plantera, the flares worked and Plantera could no longer attack us. However, once again, my sword no work. It was then I realized that it was because the True Knight's Edge does projectile damage, and since I maxed the projectile spawn, the sword wouldn't work. It was over. Once again, the plan failed. Until I realized I had one weapon left I could use. The Mithril War Axe. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Never in a million years would I have thought I would beat Plantera with an axe. But after beating Plantera to death for a century, yes, with an axe, it happened. We just defeated Plantera without getting hit. 
I opened up our treasure bag. Everything in the bag was useless, except the jungle key, since I could now enter the jungle temple and kick Gollum's stony ass. However, before I can do that, I am in desperate need of more movement speed or else Gollum will beam me down. So I went in search of the lava charm to craft the Terra Spark boots, and I stepped on a geyser. The suffering never ends. Not so soon after, I found the lava charm. Back at the surface, I crafted the Frostbark boots, Lava Waders, and achieved the Terra Spark boots. With my new Terra Spark boots equipped, I collected Hellstone, Obsidian, bought the Pirate Invasion, and crafted an unholy amount of Hellstone bars. Selling my Hellstone bars, I made two Platinum coins. I now had a net worth of four Platinum. With my newly acquired fortune, I reforged my Mega Shark, starting with locating the Jungle Temple. Mining through the jungle, collecting any chlorophyte along the way, I continued mining, and mining, and more mining, until I found the Jungle Temple, and then died. <coughs> Sorry, I meant turned into Lawn Pig. After making my way back to the Jungle Temple, we built a spawn point. With nothing left to do, I entered the Jungle Temple. Okay, listen. As bad as the desert was, as bad as the corrupt desert was, as bad as the sky was, and even as bad as bees are. Why, oh god dear, why are there so many lizards? Like the traps I can deal with. But the lizards? Why are there so many? Like, look at this. Where are they coming from? How are they multiplying? Wait a minute. Statues. They're not multiplying at all. They're freaking self-replicating. Sacrifices. Worth it. Twas indeed worth it. However, I just want to point out this for prosperity, but you guys watched three deaths. Three. I died over 40 freaking times in this temple. Anyways, now that I have conquered the jungle temple, it became clear that there was no way I could beat Gollum inside the temple, so I'd have to get him outside. At the surface, I purchased two teleporters and wire. Returning to the jungle, I tested out how I am going to get Gollum outside the temple. In doing so, I trapped myself in a wall. Purchasing dynamite, I began constructing our Gollum arena. Once it was large enough, I placed a platform, hammered it into a stair, and placed a block, and hammered it, then holding down, I clipped into the wall. Then you just hammer every other block to propel yourself forward. However, you have to do this on the side you want to clip through to. So repeating this process, I messed up and once again, trapped myself in a wall. Oh please, oh god! I built our platform with teleporters connected on each end, however, a solar eclipse spawned, and Izor lasered me into itty little bits. On the bright side, I killed a reaper and it dropped the deathsicle. With the deathsicle and my enemy grinder, I made easy work of the solar eclipse. And once Mothron spawned, I easily defeated it. Once the solar eclipse was over, I was ready to defeat Gollum. So I entered the temple, summoned Gollum, clipped through the wall, and Gollum chased after me. The arena was perfect, he couldn't hit me, or so I thought, until one of his fireballs bounced off the ceiling and pegged me in the head. So I raised the platform, and expanded the roof of the arena so his fireballs can't hit me. Now all I needed was ammo, so back at the surface I crafted some chlorified bullets. At the temple, everything was prepared. Every possible problem had been solved. So I summoned Gollum, and his fat ass landed on top of me. You know what? I'm not angry. You know why? Because I'm going to defeat him. How can Gollum be this hard? So I once again raised the platform, and he punched me so hard I exploded. Back at the surface, I crafted an Avenger emblem for more damage, and reforged my accessories for additional movement speed so I could outrun Gollum's laser beams. All that was left was to defeat Gollum, so I summoned him in. With the extra movement speed, I easily dodged his lasers. With his last 1000 HP, my adrenaline was rushing, my heart was pumping, and I ran like hell. 900. Oh, and we beat Gollum! Oh, I did it. I beat Gollum. Honestly, it's unbelievable that I'm celebrating defeating Gollum. Opening the treasure bag, I didn't get the pick saw. However, I did get a bunch of useless garbage. Before I defeat the lunatic cultist, I need to prepare our armor for Moonlord in advance, so you know what that means. That's right. If you thought go and defeat Queen Bee, you're right. <laughs> I'm actually not joking. I need the Tiki armor from the Witch Doctor. However, in order for the Witch Doctor to spawn, you need to defeat the Queen Bee. So I collected Hive Blocks, Bottles of Honey, and crafted a Beeminations. Summoning the Queen Bee, I squashed her like a bug. It was so nice, being able to easily defeat a boss. I hoped the rest of the bosses would be as easy. But oh, I was a fool. Once the Witch Doctor spawned in, I purchased the Tiki armor. If you're wondering why I need the Tiki armor, well, I need it for a particular summon, but I won't spoil the surprise. I also went ahead and crafted the yo-yo bag, since I realized I was stupid for not using the Eye of Cthulhu. 
it was officially time to defeat the lunatic cultist. So at the dungeon, in order not to get hit, I constructed two teleporters 86 blocks apart with a light switch instead of a pressure plate so I can right click whenever I wish to teleport. I built a lawn platform of wood to block incoming attacks with everything ready to go. I slaughtered the cultists and hopped in my teleporter and immediately died to a fireball. He must have rolled a nat 20 or something because I've never been hit harder in my life. Also, ever just have those moments when you try to react to something but you just stare at it like this? Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Round two. I started off strong, but then a wraith sent me six feet under. After dying a few times, I finally managed to have a good run. The lunatic cultist repeatedly followed the moveset of fireballs, ice, lightning, fire, ice, summon. So following this pattern, he summoned higher than my death sickle could reach, and I got snapped in half by a dragon. But I could improvise, so I removed the top of the roof. This time around, I used the Eye of Cthulhu, and it was working amazingly. But wait, no! What are you doing? Please! Well, that sucked. Getting the lunatic cultist into phase two, I had no bloody idea what his attack pattern was, so I teleported like a madman and dealt massive damage. Dropping his HP under 2000, it finally happened. I was so close. I knew I could defeat the lunatic cultist, so I summoned him in. It was an intense fight, as I barely dodged his attacks. However, I succeeded. And we freaking did it! And just like that, celestial creatures invaded the world. Not wasting any time, I went straight to defeat the Vortex Pillar to acquire the Vortex Beater. However, I was shotgunned to the face. Overall, the pillar wasn't super difficult. By targeting the alien hornets, I could easily farm them to lower the pillar's shield. However, the light bulbs with shotguns did pose a significant threat. But with the wyvern hot on my trail, I destroyed the vortex pillar. Collecting the vortex fragments, I returned to my base and crafted the vortex beater as well as the phantasm. I could finally retire the marrow. Thank you for your service. Now that I had the Vortex Beater, I went to challenge the other pillars, starting with the Stardust Pillar. And with the Vortex Beater, it was too easy. By farming star cells, I easily lowered the pillar's shield and destroyed it. Collecting the Stardust Fragments, I went to destroy the Nebula Pillar. And let me just say, this pillar sucks. And to all you floating brains out there, you can take your laser and shove it. However, using the black spot mount, I could hover above the pillar and just rain down bullets. And after some time, I destroyed the nebula pillar. All that was left was the solar pillar. However, once I destroy the pillar, Moon Lord will spawn. So using my Stardust Fragments, I crafted the Stardust Dragon. Remember how I bought the Tiki armor? Well, I have everything I need to defeat the Moon Lord. I went to defeat the solar pillar, and let me present to you, Flying Worms. If you thought regular worms were bad, just wait for these 70-legged pieces of trash to murder you. Anyways, here's the trick to defeating the solar pillar. Construct an L-shaped platform with hammered platforms, then build a long enough platform for enemies to spawn on the other end, and voila, you have a working solar pillar farm. However, it doesn't stop flying worms. Once the shield was destroyed, I hovered above the pillar and started blasting. With the pillar destroyed, impending doom was approaching. My screen was shaking. Light flash. Moon Man has arrived. And it took less than a second for me to be deboned. If I hadn't already, this is when I officially went insane. <laughs> but that was just a test run. The real attempt starts now. Remember how I said the flare gun would be the key to defeating Moon Lord? Well, preparing my flare gun, I shot a thousand flares. Once the flares were shot and my Stardust Dragon was at the ready, I buffed and summoned the Moon Lord. With the 1,000 flares hit in the projectile cap, Moon Lord spawned in, confused and unable to attack. The powerful Moon Lord had been reduced to a baby throwing a temper tantrum, but he could still summon eyes, so it was crucial to run and dodge their attack. And thanks to the oversized platform, it was too easy. Boom! That's how you beat Terraria with 1 HP. As Moon Lord's bones fell off screen and the credits rolled, I became champion of Terraria. And not just regular Terraria, Terraria with 1 HP. We did it. However, I still die to sand. I guess some things just never change. If you've watched the video until the end, you're freaking awesome. Like and comment below, and since you're already here, why not subscribe? Thank you for all the support, I'll see you in the next video. Burn! <laughs> oh, she jumped in! Sparkle!